Hello everybody, it's the Actantator here, and today I want to bring you sort of a different video, something that's been requested to me from quite a few people, and I want to show you how to record. This is using DX Tori, and well, let me move my microphone so that the wavelengths look better. Okay, I want to show you how you can use DX Tori. Now, it isn't a free program, although the, there is a free demo available for use. And so once you've installed this, or you've bought the full version and installed it, I'm going to go ahead and want to run the program. Say yes, because it requires administrative... Ugh. Ugh. Alright, sorry, pay no attention to me. Then you want to... So first of all, it's probably going to look like this. Now you don't need to mess with any of these quite yet. Although you will want to go here. Make sure that these are on. And you want to change these colors. So when you're recording, I believe it's default orange. So you know when you're recording and you're not. And it'll show up kind of in the upper corner of your screen. And next you want to go over here to your audio. Now you want to change these to how you want. You want, if you want to record your system sound and your microphone, what you want to do is change one of them to headphones or whatever type of audio device you're using. If you're using your built-in speakers or your external speakers like me, you'd simply change it to speakers. Now, if you have any other things like these, Avnex thing, do not use that. That will completely mess you up. So once you've got your microphone and your headphones, or your speakers, of course, you need to change these options because you do not need studio quality audio. Um, I'm, I'm quite sure that this is just fine. It's what I use in all of my videos. So you want to change it to 48,000 hertz and stereo. Of course, you need stereo. Now, you can change it to 32, but if you want, this is just slightly better sound. But I, as I said, I use 16-bit, 4800 hertz, and it's very good quality. I mean, that's like what you would find on a CD or DVD. Okay, next you want to go to your movie. And you're going to notice that this probably says DX Story Video Codec. No. That's going to take up like a gigabyte for every second. I do not want this. So, what we're going to do is you're going to use this. Now, the X264 will not show up by default, so what you need to do go into your internet, do a search for Google X264 uh, codec, and even if you have a 64-bit system, I would just find a website like Free Codex that, you know, it seems pretty trustworthy, you need to download and install this. Now, you need the 32-bit version, and right now this is an advertisement. So, once you download and install that, again, the 32-bit version, because you're running DX Story at 32 bits. Now next, you want to change your frame rate. Um, if it's at like 10, that's going to be the laggiest video in the world. I recommend 29.97 or 30, or if you're making a slow motion, uh, 60. If you're making like a time lapse and you're speeding it up five times, you can get away with six frames per second. Although you're um, best off for like a time lapse, you're still best off at 20. Now 120, that's really only if you're doing a serious slow motion thing, like if you're setting off a massive explosion in a game, like a nuke and then you're slowing it down 10 times maybe, 5 times. Um, but anyway, swiftly moving on. So next you want to, if you're recording gameplay, you don't want your mouse cursor, so turn that off. And then you don't need to turn this on, although it, if you have like video stability problems, like if your game runs with no lag but your video is lagging, turn this on. And now make sure you've switched it to here once you've downloaded it and installed that. Now you want to go into the configuration by pressing that button there. And change this to 19. And these are all very complicated settings, although you, they are pretty important, although you don't need to mimic everyone. But this one right here is extremely important. Make sure that this is on 264, X264, because H264, you're not, it, it's not nearly as good of quality and it, it's a little laggier. So next you want to turn... Just kind of mimic these settings, so you don't need to mimic all of them, although I do recommend specifically turning this to zero fuel pell, full pell, whatever I like to call it, fuel pell, like gasoline, because gasoline is flammable, and flammable equals good, because all boys like starting fires. So, well, that was a lie. Uh, turn interlaced off, weighted P frames, none, uh, I8 times 8, and I8 times 8. Now, rate control and RV, you don't really need to mess with this, although you will want to turn multi-threading, threads to 
Okay, so I have a four core system, so I'm going to turn it to two so that I can still have some threads for my game. Although normally if you're on Intel and you have a four core i7, you also have four logical cores, which gives you eight threads. So you can use probably four for that. Although for the sake of this, I'm just going to use two. Although if you just don't want to mess with it and you want it to decide, just change it to zero. That's what I actually prefer. 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 <laughs> Alright, and next up you've got these settings. Uh, you don't need to mess with these. Change this to AVI Direct Shell. That's only if you're streaming. There might be a separate video on that. A uh, raw cap that's just going to make a massive mess of things. Don't do that. Uh, scaling 100%. Uh, this stuff you shouldn't have to mess with. You want to go here and click on your video setting. Now this is where you can adjust the resolution. And you can also record to multiple outputs. So let's say you want to have three copies of the file or four copies of the file. You can change the resolutions and and so on, but I'm not going to go into detail about that. So um, right now under 16 to 9, that is the resolution of widescreen monitors. And then this is Ultra HD 1610. That's the newer monitors that are like 2560p, as you see here. Um, but my monitor is 1920 by 1080, so I'm going to set it to that. And also you need to know that you cannot, if you have a 1080p monitor, you cannot record in 2560p. It just doesn't work like that because it's it's recording this thing on your monitor. It's not taking an extended over over resolution output from your graphics card or anything. No recorder does that. Now here you're going to notice I've got a little problem. I have 30 frames per second here and 29.97 here. This isn't really going to hurt your recording. It might be a little herky jerky. Although that the biggest problem that you could possibly notice is that it's, I mean, just really a little herky jerky, and then it, it's bigger file size actually. But uh, right now, if you've noticed in some of my older videos on a, my uh, my friend's M Van Ten channel, sometimes it just starts flickering, and it, it's like it's going to give you a seizure. It's like black, and then the video like constantly. And this is because the black the back colors was on black. You need to change this to something that you like the look of, so I just chose red because you know blood. Lovely. Now, blank image file, this is what it's going to display when that happens, and then it'll keep displaying it, which is extremely useful. So, I recommend that you use, like, maybe your channel logo or something. That's why I have mine under the Accentator logo. And, uh, other than that, now that you've got that, you need to change your hotkey settings so that you know when you're going to record and so on. So right now, I, because I'm extremely lazy, I just set it to numpad minus because I can easily reach it and the F keys are always very used. So just change that to something that works well for you. Now under your advanced settings, don't mess with these. I mean, you can really mess your stuff up, but if you do have more than one GPU, which is your video card, um, if you don't know, you can either go into DXDiag and find out check your system specs or you can look in the back of your computer oh and by the way if it's an all-in-one it's not going to have it or a laptop not going to have it um look in the back of your computer and if there's more than one hdmi port then it's there and i recommend setting your processing threads to the highest it'll go under here all right now that you've got this you're ready to record again so i'm just going to do minecraft and note that it's going to be laggy because i'm recording the screen with fast stones um, and I'm going to record the Minecraft with DX Tori because there's one more crucial step that will mess you up and it tricked me for a long time. So yeah, th this is really important. I'm just going to go into a single player world. Go here. Wait for it to load. And I'm going to press my hotkey. Alright, and now you see in the top left hand corner it says video 8 and file 8. Now, if it doesn't say file and then a number, then something is wrong, and leave a comment and I'll help you. It's probably because you're using a decoding codec instead of an encoding, so you need to use the times 264. Um, and then the other numbers are just the frames per second of your game, the that's the video, and then the file is the frames per second of the recording. So if your file is at 0 and your game's at 50, that means that your file is being recorded at 0 frames per second. And if it's like that, then you need to enable the synchronized video FPS, like I said earlier. So now that we've got some footage, we can close out of our game. Then it, we know, sorry, I forgot to go over this. 
the X store is in our tray. Let's go ahead and restore. And this is where it's going to record. Now I'll go over this stuff in detail later. Well, basically you, you just add a directory, and then when you're ready, you want to go ahead and click run and let it do that. It's going to test the right speed. The higher, the better. That's why I don't recommend recording to an external drive. But anyway, once you've got your footage, let's go into here and find it. So it's right here. I'm just going to move it to my desktop. Now I'm going to rename it. Now you need to open something called AV on Muse. Now you can either search for this in your start menu or like the video setting. It's at the bottom left hand corner of your DX story. Now you can either add using that or drag this in. And note that you can only do one at a time. Although this is going to combine your audio streams and it's also going to um, make it usable in an editor because without this it's going to be sped up in an editor and then at the end you're just going to have one frame being displayed for a very long time. Just This is crucial. Now change this if you're combining more than one audio stream. I turn this off. Notice it says this. So you need an audio codec. I recommend PCM 48,000 Hz and then 16-bit stereo so it matches your others. And then video codec. Do not mess with this. The no encode is just fine. It'll even be smaller than the encoded file, the previous file. So now you just need to go ahead and press build. Depending on the length of your video, it can take quite a while. Although now this O1 Mux AVI, this is your done file. Now if you want just the audio, you can right click and extract audio stream. Now if you do this to the non muxed file, that's what I like to call it. Oh, notice that it adds the mux so you can tell it apart. Then it's going to give you every audio stream. Although right now, if I do this, it's been combined just down to one. Alright, so next up, you can open this in an editor. And then, oh, and all the way, also, by the way, don't play the raw file. It can crash your computer. But the mux file is fine to play. As you can see, we've got some nice laggy footage. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. But um, other than that, that is how to record with DX Story. That is how I record. Make sure to let me know if you have any problems. And uh, adios. I guess I'll see you all next time, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, let me know in the comments if you have any problems. And like the video if it helped you out. Thank you and goodbye.